put Diablo into historical perspective, back in the 60s when this plant was proposed and designed, the government was supporting a thousand nuclear plants from nationwide. Hi, you're listening to the Fairwinds Energy Education Podcast, hosted by the Fairwinds Crew. I'm Maggie Gunderson, and today we're launching a special series on the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant located in California. There have been some recent changes at Diablo Canyon, so it's been in the national news, and we're receiving many, many questions from people all over the country and all over the world. So we've invited our chief engineer, Arnie Gunderson, to tell you about the backstory regarding Diablo Canyon as we launch this series. Arnie, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Maggie. Hey, Fairwinds. Hey, listeners. It's nice to be here. Diablo Canyon goes way back in history. It was proposed in the 60s, back in an era when the United States thought they'd have a 1,000 nuclear plants. Right now we have 100. Electricity is already produced in nuclear power stations all over the country. Scientists are working to learn ways to make the cost of electricity the same price or lower than electricity from coal-burning plants. They were talking about building a nuclear plant every 50 miles up and down the California coast. Diablo is one of those reactors. After a long licensing arguments with the, with the people of the state of California, the uh, construction actually began in 1968. That means major compounds like the nuclear reactor were built in the 1960s. So uh, shortly after construction was approved, Pacific Gas and Electric, the owner, suddenly discovered an, an awful lot of earthquake faults right offshore. Here's what the chairman of Pacific Gas and Electric, that's the company that owned Diablo Canyon, had to say about the mess that was created there. The experts we dealt with that we were engaging said they did not think any further analysis offshore was necessary beyond what had been done onshore. Uh, there's a debate whether they knew about those earthquake faults before the license was approved and didn't bring them up until afterward. You know, with the NRC, it's easier to get forgiveness than it is approval. The NRC chairman at the time was very unhappy about the design of Diablo, but yet he licensed it anyway. Here's what he had to say. There have been lapses of many kinds in design analyses resulting in built-in design errors, in poor construction practices, in falsified documents, in harassment of quality control personnel, and inadequate training of reactor operators. So they got the license and were moving forward in the 70s. Diablo Canyon is a, a two-unit nuclear reactor, and it's built by Westinghouse, not by uh, General Electric like Fukushima. So it's an entirely different reactor design. One of the reactors uh, was supposed to be built to be the mirror image of the other, and in fact, they used the same prints instead of different blueprints. So that meant that all the pipe restraints, all the things that hold the pipes up, were in the wrong locations. You know, great embarrassment. No question about it. Uh, it's the kind of error which has occurred other places. I didn't think it would occur at our plant, but it did. And the immediate reaction, of course, why did it happen? And what does it tell us about the rest of the work we did there? That again was the chairman of Pacific Gas and Electric. And they discovered that in the 70s, but it took until 1985 before the plant finally got straightened out and put up online. There was a huge public protest about these backward drawings. Back in 1981, an attorney representing the state of California, really succinctly put the problem into perspective. Here's his comments. The dispute in this proceeding is not between people who are pro-nuclear and anti-nuclear. The dispute in this proceeding centers on whether the Diablo plant does or does not pose an unacceptable risk to the health and safety of all Californians, 
and in particular to the residents of this San Luis Obispo County who would be most immediately affected by a nuclear accident resulting from seismic activity on the Hosgri Fault Zone. The proceeding doesn't place nuclear power on trial, but in a, in a way it does place the nuclear regulatory process on trial. Before Three Mile Island, the NRC assured the public that the likelihood of a serious accident resulting in core damage occurring at a nuclear power plant was so small as to be almost non-existent. The accident TMI not only destroyed that myth, but severely damaged the already tarnished reputation of the NRC. And again, the NRC uh, supported Diablo and uh, Pacific Gas and Electric and refused to allow a relicensing hearing at the time. Uh, you know, confirming what you've heard from Ferens all along, that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is the handmaiden to the nuclear industry. At the time, an NRC commissioner was very unhappy about the pressure that the nuclear industry was applying to get these licenses approved. Here's what he had to say about Diablo. There's been a great deal of pressure over the past uh, few years on the Commission to avoid delays in, in issuing full power licenses for, uh, for plants. And I think this case manifests uh, the, uh, the results of those kinds of pressures on the Commission. The first unit at Diablo had been scheduled to start up in 73, but in fact it was 85, 1985, before it went online. And it had a 40-year license uh, that expires in 2024. Uh, the second unit went online a year later in 86, and it's got a 40-year license that uh, allows it to run until 2025. If you count on your fingers from the 60s to now, you've got six decades have, have gone by, and, and, and more than 50 years since the first engineering was done and the first parts were, were ordered. And parts wear out. You know, we, we all know that. So this is an aging power plant. So one of the problems it faces moving forward is the cost to replace all these things that are wearing out compared to the cost of renewables. One of the arguments that uh, people who want to keep Diablo running has been, uh, oh, this is a premature shutdown. No, it was designed for 40 years, and uh, the license is for 40 years, and they're going to shut it down at the end of the 40 years it was originally designed for. So this is not a premature shutdown by, by any means. When you build something 50 years ago and expect it to run beyond its uh, design life, you know, rubber wears out. You, you see it all the time on uh, you know, refrigerators or your car or, or whatever. How many refrigerator gaskets last, uh, for the last 40 years? They, they don't. And, of course, all the insulation on the wires, it's the same thing. The biggest problem was that uh, the nuclear reactor vessel was built in the 60s when they used a lot of copper in the nuclear reactor. And uh, copper turns out to be very uh, sensitive to high levels of radiation. And the Diablo vessel is one of the most embrittled in the, in the world. Now, Ferens did a, a long video about nuclear embrittlement that you might want to go visit on the site. But basically... Because of the high copper content in Diablo, the nuclear reactor can shatter like glass. It's interesting because here's another case where the NRC was the handmaiden to Pacific Gas and Electric. They know this problem existed. They should have done a full inspection of the vessel in 2014, but they asked the NRC for an extension until 2025, after the 40-year license had expired. So they, they kick the can down the road knowing they're going to experience problems. So Diablo Canyon was allowed to kick the can down the road and not inspect this entire nuclear reactor until after the 40 years had expired. Well, that's a little bit too late. So that's one indication of a gravely um, aged component that has been allowed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to uh, continue to run uninspected until uh, until 2025. You know, there's a lot of other things that happened in the, in the ensuing time span. First, Diablo pumps 2 billion gallons of hot water into the Pacific every day. And uh, rules have changed, and you're not allowed to do that now. So Diablo is facing the, the need for a couple billion dollar cooling tower to protect the aquatic organisms that are in the Pacific. 
the biggest problem still is the uh, seismic problems. And they knew if they went for a license extension, there was going to be all sorts of opposition to the seismic problems. Pacific Gas and Electric was considering asking the Nuclear Regulatory Commission for an extra 20 years to run this plant from 2024 out to 2044. And they knew there would be a significant opposition to that, uh, to that decision, especially on the seismic concerns. You know, we have to remember that, uh, that Dr. Peck, the NRC's own, own guy, felt that uh, the licensing of Diablo should never have occurred with the uh, seismic constraints the way they're presently analyzed. So they had a, a series of really significant problems that they had an uphill fight to get the reactor licensed for an extra 20 years. When Diablo was constructed, they only looked for faults on shore, earthquake faults on shore. But shortly after the permits were approved, an oil company was looking for offshore oil and discovered a serious fault that actually connects right into the San Andreas. Uh, and it was named Hosgri, H-O-S-G-R-I. And that's the first syllables of the two scientists that discovered it. The more people looked, the more uh, earthquake faults they discovered offshore, including something called the shoreline fault, which is incredibly close to the power plant, less than about four football fields away. There's 13 that have finally been discovered, all of which are connected into the San Andreas. So it's just a question, it's a matter of time, that when the San Andreas moves, these other ones will move too, and the results could be could be devastating. If you build a power plant on the Pacific Coast, you, you have to anticipate earthquakes. And, uh, you know, this plant was built at the same time that Fukushima Daiichi was built, and obviously the engineers didn't do a very good job of anticipating earthquakes or tsunamis. Uh, the West Coast has a, a long history of tsunamis as well as earthquakes. The last thing I'd like to talk about is, is the fact that to keep a plant running after it gets to 40 years, it's like restoring an antique car or something like that. It costs billions and billions of dollars. With renewables dropping in price, Rocky Mountain Research Institute with Amory Lovins has determined that just throwing all this money into the plant to keep it running didn't make sense. And you're better off spending that money on renewables. Amory Lovins has been a contributor on our Fairwind site. Here's what Amory had to say about comparing nuclear and coal units to renewables. And when we're told you need the coal and nuclear plants to keep the lights on because they're 24-7, while solar and wind power are variable and thus supposedly unreliable, uh, this is completely fallacious. So to wrap this first podcast up, I was in high school when the public in California was uh, protesting the design of Diablo. I was in college when Diablo was being built, and I got out of college the same year that Diablo Canyon should have started up. Because of engineering screw-ups, they finally started up in 1985. So this plan has a long history of, uh, of controversy. To put Diablo into historical perspective, back in the 60s when this plant was proposed and designed, the government was supporting 1,000 nuclear plants nationwide and one every 50 miles up and down the west coast of America. So this is the end of that legacy, the closure of Diablo Canyon is still eight years in the future, and all those risks that I talk about are still there. But there is a date certain to close the plant now and end that nuclear legacy. We'll be picking up the pieces from Adams for Peace for another 60 years after this plant is shut down because the dismantlement will not occur very quickly. Thank you for joining us today and listening to the Fairwinds Energy Education Podcast. This podcast is the first part in a series on Diablo Canyon and its forthcoming closure. We will also discuss the deal between Pacific Gas and Electric and large national environmental organizations to begin the shutdown process and what the closure of Diablo Canyon means when it's compared to San Onofre.
how will this atomic power be replaced? Why are renewables the right way to go? Thank you for joining us. We'll keep you informed.